Well, welcome, Kings fans, to another edition of our Legend Series Conversations. Nick Nixon here, and uh, hope, obviously, everyone is staying healthy this summer. And our theme uh, this time around, as you could probably figure out from uh, our two guests on your screen, is going to be goaltending. You know, we're joined by two former King goaltenders, Stefan Fassé and Peter Budai. In the history of Kings hockey, we have had 71 different goaltenders wear the Kings colors. And uh, we're, we're happy to be joined by Stefan Fassé and Peter Budai at this time. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for doing this. Um, Going to go in order seniority here. Uh, <laughs> we'll start with uh, Stefan. Um, you were with the Kings for the better part of uh, five seasons beginning in 1996. The Kings had traded for you um, from, from Colorado. Uh, and you retired, uh, what, almost 18, 19 years ago. So give us a sense for what you're doing now, what keeps you busy, and where are you living? Are you back home in Montreal? Fill us in, if you would. Well, I'm uh, back home for me right now. It's uh, Victoriaville. It's a little city right between uh, Montreal and Quebec City. And uh, that's where I play my junior. So I met my wife here uh, in Victoriaville. And uh, as soon as the Quebec Nordics got sold and moved to Colorado, we sold our house in, uh, in Quebec City and moved to Victoriaville. So every time we were coming back during summer, that was home for me, Victoriaville. So uh, that's where I live right now. And uh, what I'm doing is, uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm still a, uh, and uh, hockey player agent, you know, I work with uh, Don Meehan groups and uh, I take care of uh, some uh, young players like uh, Philip Dano in, uh, for the Montreal Canadiens. He's having a great season. So uh, it's fun to take care of the, the young kids. And I started like four years ago to, uh, to coach. I'm coaching. Uh, it's for us in Quebec, it's uh, college, college AAA. It's uh, players from 17 years old to 20 years old has to go to school if they want to play in that league. It's almost like a UCLA a little bit, but for us in Quebec City. So I'm coaching there. I'm an uh, assistant coach there. I'm coaching the, the goalies for sure, but I'm taking care of the defensemen too. And uh, you know what? I'm having a lot of fun uh, doing that right now. That's great. And uh, Peter, um... I know up until the 2018-19 season, you were still playing. As a matter of fact, that was uh, your final season as a pro. You were in the Kings organization, um, playing for Ontario in the Kings. So it's been a short time since you've been away from competitive hockey. Uh, where are you right now? Where are you living and what are you doing? What keeps you busy? Well, uh, we moved with my wife to uh, Montana. Uh, we live in Bozeman. And um, the reason why everybody's like, why would you pick Montana? It's my wife went to school there and uh, her side of family is a little bit from there. Uh, so we always used to, when I met my wife, we, we went there a few times, few summers for like a vacation. And it's a very pretty place and um, very outdoorsy. It's great for the kids and um, kind of want the kids to be experienced being outdoor and just staying at home. Uh, not just, not just staying home and doing stuff like that, but actually um, doing stuff like the kids did when, I, when we were young. So I'm trying to stay busy. You know, I'm doing some hockey camps. Um, I started my kind of like a small online school and I, you know, kind of tried to do goalie camps. And especially around the area, there's not many goaltender uh, coaches there um, in Montana. So I tried to travel a little bit and uh, kind of give back to the kids. And uh, Stefan said the same thing, you know, I'm having a great time coaching, you know, uh, I, uh, I know that I have been away from the game very short time, but I really, really enjoy it. I really, really like it. And um, I want to kind of give my knowledge, what I've learned over the years to young kids. And because uh, I remember when I was a kid, I would appreciate if somebody would do that to me because <laughs> it yeah. would, help me. I would benef be very beneficial for me. So. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And of course, there's a tie in between the two of you. And uh, before we started our conversation, uh, I think Stefan mentioned you had uh, talked or met Peter once or twice before, but um, you both began your uh, NHL careers in the same organization. Uh, now the Colorado Avalanche, Stefan, when you started, they were still the Nordique uh, in, in Quebec. Um, and then, of course, later on in your careers, you become Kings. I want to talk about your time 
as a king. Stefan, you won a Stanley Cup. It was the first season that the Avalanche were playing in Denver in Colorado. And you were there with Patrick Waugh. You win the Stanley Cup. And a couple, well, it wasn't even a couple of months later that you were traded. A uh, couple of weeks. Game. Yeah, a couple of weeks, right. Yeah, late June. Um, talk about winning the Cup in Colorado, uh, growing up in the organization, and then it, it culminates with you being a champion. And all of a sudden, now you're going somewhere else. Talk about that time in your career. Well, it was uh, it was an easy move for me to ask for that trade. You know, uh, Pat Patrick. Uh, everybody knows Patrick. Peter knows Patrick pretty well too. So, uh, uh, Patrick, when he came to Colorado for me, uh, my game. Uh, I wasn't playing much after that. You know, I had maybe maybe ten starts after uh, Patrick got uh, to Colorado. So uh, for me, it was easy to ask for a trade. And when I heard that uh, I was traded to to the Kings, I was really happy. You know, I look at the charts and uh, see the goalies there, see the team, what it looked like, and um, I was really happy to move there. You know, that was a new beginning for me. It was kind of strange a little bit. You know, get used to play hockey when it's snowing outside, and now going to the ring with uh, you know flip flops and uh, just t-shirt, and uh, that was. A little bit strange, a little bit, but uh, it was pretty easy. And playing for the Kings was uh, was great. You know that that was for me my chance to become a number one goalie. That was my goal to become a number one goalie in the league. So I had the chance to do that. And uh, the only thing missing is making the playoff more often there with the Kings because the fans were great when we make the playoff. But uh, good thing for the Kings later. They won the cup, so I, mean, I was I was happy for the fans to to have the chance to uh, you know to, to see the cup and then their team winning the the cup too. So, and, and talk briefly about your your coach. I think for three of your five seasons, or maybe four of the five seasons you were in LA, was Larry Robinson, uh, yeah. the Hall of Fame defenseman. Um, talk about playing for Larry. What was that like for you? It was great. You know, Larry is a really great guy and I love to talk to, to the players and tell some stories too, you know, when he was playing. So uh, it was fun, you know. Uh, he was a great coach. We had Rick Green with him as uh, assistant coach. So uh, they, they were doing some uh, tricks for, uh, you know, in the dressing room. So uh, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was kind of funny too. And, the, the thing with Larry, you know, he was so such a, a great guy that when we were having our pra practice, you know, the, our morning skate, and one of the players wasn't playing that night, Larry was skating by, playing with him a little bit. You know, he, it was tough for him to go tell the guys that he was scratched for, for the game that night. So he was such a great, great guy. And, uh, you know, we had some good talks with him, and uh, he was a good coach too, you know. I love to play for him. And Peter, uh, you began in the Colorado organization. Uh, you, you, you did your time in the American Hockey League. Then you, you played, I think, six, were with the Avs for six full seasons. Uh, and later on in your career, after some up and down time with the Montreal Canadiens organization, uh, you became a king. And uh, I'm looking back on that for you, and, and I'll have you weigh in. Becoming a part of the Kings organization, as it turned out, didn't that kind of restart your, your career as a goalie, uh, especially in the NHL? Uh, absolutely. You know, I, I think uh, I, I, was in, I was with Montreal, and then I got traded to uh, uh, Winnipeg, and then Winnipeg sent me to the minors, and uh, I just wasn't mentally, you know, ready for the minors. I, I did not take it really well, and I was focusing on the wrong things, and I had the worst season I've ever had there. You know, I didn't have one win. I lost every single game I started. I tied three, lost in the shootout. So it was a pretty, uh, pretty tough, uh, tough moment for me. And then after that season, I didn't have anything. And, and uh, you know, I was thinking, I was looking at the charts, as, you know, you always do, what team can maybe take me as a walk-in or whatever. And, and, you know, LA had a great goalies. You know, they, they, had, a, they had a great goalies. They obviously quickie, you know, they just won a, a Calder Cup with a minor team. You know, they, they, had, they have everybody there. But my agent told me, you know what, just go try it, you know, see how it is. And 
So I went there with clear minds. I say, you know what, if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, you know, this could be it for me and everything else. And I think that mindset really helped me and uh, really just allow me to just play and not think, you know, I think that sometimes uh, players and I'm talking for myself, we sometimes overthink stuff or we think about the outcome of the situation before it even happens. And that takes away our focus from the game of the moment that we should be focusing on. So that helped me a lot because I didn't have any expectation. I just went there. I was happy that I had one more chance to be, you know, in HL dressing room and maybe, you know, uh, get a chance to play and everything worked out fine. You know, I, I, you know, they had to, uh, I think the Ruby got picked up on, um, on the waivers uh, as a goalie who was there because yeah. uh, he had to go through waivers to clear it. He didn't clear, so he got picked up. And then Bartosak got hurt. He got a little bit of, you know, like surgery. So they gave me like a PTO contract and I signed. And, um, you know, obviously we had a really strong team and, you know, Mike started did a really good job. Uh, we, we play well and I was playing well and uh, everything just fell in place. And um, then the year afterwards, you know, I got called up to the Kings and uh, that worked out great. So, yeah, you can say that it kind of restart my <laughs> my time in the NHL a little bit too. <laughs> Yeah, well, you had a I great. Can, I, you were. I can in. tell this. Uh, Go ahead. I can. Uh, I can tell. Uh, like Peter was saying, it's pretty hard when you play in the NHL and get sent down in the minors. I remember my last year with the Kings before I got traded to Montreal. You know, I had my best training camp and I got sent down in the minors. So when you go back in the, in the minors after playing so many years in the NHL. Your, your mind is not there. Your focus is not the right place. And you're just waiting for, you know, to get that trade, that second chance to, to play, to come back in the NHL. Yeah. I, yeah, I completely agree with that. You know, that, that was my mindset. I was, I was focusing on, is there any open spot? Is somebody, you know, what is the other people doing? You know, they're going to call me up because this guy's not doing well. I was not focusing on mm -hmm. my job, which was stopping the puck. And that resulted in <laughs> horrible season. So. <laughs> and as it turned out, uh, Peter, um, you know, Jonathan Quick goes down with an injury in the 2016-2017 uh, season, and you pretty much carry the load. And, and I remember saying throughout the course of that season uh, to our listeners on the radio, Daryl Evans and I, that if I told you a King goaltender played 53 games, had 27 wins, a 2.12 average, seven shutouts, they'd say another good year for Jonathan Quick. Well, those were the numbers you had that year. So so that had to be really rewarding for you. It, it was, yeah, definitely it was. Um, uh, I was um, I was in a very good mind mind place. You know, I, I it seemed for me that everything worked out perfectly for me. Unfortunately, like Quickie got hurt and everything else. But for me, the guy got a called up. You know, uh, I don't think I would get a chance to be called up because you guys had two good goalies, you know, Zatkov was there, um, Quickie was there. So I, my chance was only somebody would get hurt. And obviously I don't wish anybody to get hurt, but then I got a chance to play and I just end up playing and end up playing really well. And the team was playing really well in front of me. I have to say that Daryl's other style of game, uh, it's it's very good defensive game. I know it's kind of boring for the fans, you know, it's, it's boring for the people to watch. It definitely helps the goalies to, to, <laughs> to, to be able to just focus on one thing, you don't have to focus on many things because there was very structural, precise man. So, um, yeah. you know, it was it was just a great time for me. You know, I just had a, I just had a blast. You know, it was it was, it was cool. Well, it's not boring when you win. And yeah, uh... that's, that's, <laughs> no, you don't know you don't know that in the new NHL they say it's boring <laughs> when you win. You have to win the yeah. certain way. You have exactly. to play lateral. You don't play north south no more. You play east west now. Everybody wants to play east west now. Yeah, yeah. Um, going back to the Colorado tie, uh, Stefan, when you broke in, a teammate of yours was Joe Sackick, who has been the GM of the Avalanche for a number of years now. And Peter, when you broke in, Joe was towards the end of his career. Talk about Joe Sackick as a teammate and what stood out to you. Obviously, one of the all-time great centers in NHL history, um, just Joe Sackick as a teammate of yours. Stefan, uh, what, what stands out? Well, he was great all around. On the ice, off the ice. He had a great wife, too. He got a nice family. Uh, he was 
great all over the place. So, uh, you know, he's, when I got, when I started to play with Joe, he was, uh, he was, I think he was at 21 years old and I was 19 and he was already good, you know, uh, in Quebec, our team wasn't that good that year. My first year, we got 36 points overall. So that wasn't mm -hmm. a great season. We didn't even win a game. You were talking, Peter, about uh, not winning a game. <laughs> I was in the same boat uh, my, my first year in the NHL. So, uh, but Joe, you know, he never complained. Uh, he worked hard all the time during the practice, off the ice in the gym. Uh, you know what? He's, he's doing little things that, not too many players can do on the ice, you know, uh, especially like uh, shooting, same time than he's skating. You know, most of the players are stopping and they, 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 um, they stop skating and they take their shots. But Joe, was, his feet were still moving and was shooting at the same time. His wrist shot was harder than his slap shot. But uh, you know what? He was just a great, great player, great teammate. I love to play uh, with him, and uh, every time when I got traded to LA, every time we were playing against uh, the Avs, you know, during the warm up, he was coming to me, talking to me, and he was asking me how many goals he's gonna get tonight. And I was saying, <laughs> well, it depends how many shots you're gonna take. So uh, <laughs> he was such a, he was such a great player, you know. But uh, it was fun to play uh, with Joe Sakic. Peter, uh, how about uh, Joe Sackick uh, from from where you sat in goal? Yeah, well, I was I was very happy that Joe was on my side. Uh, cause <laughs> <laughs> I think I got lucky with that because um, you know I got there. Obviously, he was already uh, a veteran player with uh, you know future Hall of Famer and everything else, and and he was just as Stefan said the same thing. You know, he was just the leader. You know, he wasn't the leader because he talked too much in the dressing room, mm -hmm. and but no. He was the quiet leadership, that, that the true leadership, that his actions speak louder, spoke louder than his words. Like, he was always there. He has, as Stefan said, he was first guys in the dressing room, always work extra, always getting the stuff done. Um, um, off the ice, he was an unbelievable person, you know. Like, he's that athlete that when you have your kids, you kind of want to say, you know what, this is how you should carry yourself on the ice and off the ice. You know, you don't see any troubles, any problems. He's just hard work, dedication, good team player, good good person in general, like he's, he's a good person and, and just a tremendous, um, tremendous player. And, you know, people always ask me who's got the hardest shot, you know, coming down the wing. I still would put him because as Stefan said, you can't really read the shot because he's skating full speed and, you know, he never stop moving his feet. That is difficult for a goaltender to, to get set and to be able to read the release. So he was so good at it. Like he would beat the goalies uh, five hole in the era where the butterfly style was starting to like be big and clean up, cleaning up five hole, he would be able to beat the goalie. I apologize for that. That's not a message. So he would be able to do that because he's such a good shot. Yeah. 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 That was going to be one of my questions. Uh, hardest shot you, you've ever had to face, but I think you both answered that question. Uh, uh, or maybe not. Maybe Stefan has somebody else. Yeah. You never know. Well, I play with older guys than than than, than Joe's. <laughs> but, you know, he had a hard shot, but a quick shot. You know, when yeah. you talk about like a really really hard shot, I'm thinking about Al McInnes, Red Hull. Uh, those were like really hard, heavy shots. You know, but Joe was quick. Was quick, yeah. Quick, and he can pick like little holes. You know, like uh, you give him a little thing. He was putting the puck right there. But for the hardest shot, I will go with Al McInnes and uh, Brett Hall. Okay. I always, you, to, uh, I always wanted you to can ask. Forget, you can forget Rob Blake either. You have to yeah. say Rob Blake. I have no yeah. choice. <laughs> That's what I was saying. Like, Blake had a really, really hard shot. What I wanted to ask you, what about Ali Afredi? Have you played against him? Yeah, yeah, I played against How was his shot? It was really, really hard, you know, um, but... You know, I always find a lefty a little bit easier to stop than a right-handed shot. So Al uh -huh. McInnes and Brett Hall was right-handed. Mm -hmm. And the way they were shooting, it was a little bit harder for me. Uh, yeah. Those shot than the Hall Yefferday. But the Hall Yefferday, again, the, yeah, the it, great shot, you know, was heavy. It was hard, you know. Every low, time, and especially with like our it. equipment that time, you know. <laughs> hit the, the, the glove, my hand, uh, I had a bruise for two weeks on my hand. So... Uh, <laughs> It was different uh, back then. Yeah, it, it's it's funny that you said that about uh, about the righties and lefties. Like 
you know, for example, Zdeno Chara has the hardest shot so far. Well, now that the other guy, the mm-hmm. minor shot, whatever, Ferk scored, re shot 109 or whatever. But Chara had the title for a long time. But for me personally, as you were saying, same thing, Shea Weber was harder for me to read, even though they had both amazingly hard shots. But I'm not saying that Zdeno Chara's shot is not hard, but Shea Weber for me personally was harder and seemed heavier. That shot seems just a little bit heavier because he was a right-handed shot. Maybe it's got something to do with that. I don't know. Maybe. Our goalies, eh? The goalies are all uh, mixed up <laughs> in our head. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I've been calling games for over 40 years. Uh, I started in the American Hockey League and, um, of course, with the Kings for so many years. And, and there's always been the myth that goaltenders are a different breed. Um, <laughs> Is there any truth to that, or do you feel like you're just like a defenseman, a forward, you're just another teammate on a, a team of 23, 24 players, or do you have to be a little off, a little quirky to want to be hit by shots coming at you 100 miles an hour? Stefan? Well, you have to be a little bit different, but uh, <laughs> uh, I think for myself, you know, what the players were saying that I was kind of strange because I was like the players, you know, before a game, I was talking to everybody. I didn't mind if guys were touching my equipment or, uh, you know, stuff like that. You know, I was like with everybody uh, before the game. So, but I'm, I play with some strange goalie, really, like uh, Ron <laughs> Stahl, uh, you know, he used to spit in his uh, mask before going on the ice. Uh, Jimmy Store used to spend maybe 10 minutes in the bathroom before going on the ice. And Peter, you play with Patrick. Patrick yeah. was like, Oh, he had, it, he had his thing. He was yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah he, he like, but I agree with Stefan. It's not just, I mean, for goalie, you, you need to be a little bit, you need to have a passion for the game and a different mindset. I think you like to be the backbone of the team. You don't like, you know, you like that pressure on you. Uh, it's different mites. And in my opinion, than the like forward, for example, you know, if the forward misses the shot, everybody's going to say, hey, you know what, he could have scored. But if the goalie makes, doesn't make a save that he should make, like, you know, that uh, pressure is a little bit bigger. But I, as I said, you know, I, I was the same way. I didn't care if everybody touched my gear or something like that. It didn't bother me. But, for example, Brian Elliott, like, this guy is night and day. Like, he would walk, <laughs> in, like, he would be there for three and a half hours, almost four hours before. And – you don't even know, you don't even know if somebody's out up there. Like you just like, like, is he okay? Like, <laughs> like he's completely like so focused and everybody's different, you know, like, I mean, it's, it's funny. It's like Stefan said, somebody gets, gets himself going, being really focused and somebody has to be kind of loose a little bit because then he overthinks stuff. So it's everybody's different. Yeah. So, so on game day, both of you wouldn't mind if, um, members of the media after the morning skate came up to you and talk. I know so many guys now, uh, so many members of the media on game day, when the room is open for the media, you don't talk to the starting goaltender, the goalie that comes off first. But for both of you, was that something? Yeah, come here. Let's, let's have a talk. I don't care. For me, I didn't care. You know, uh, the game was, in that, was at night, not in the morning. So uh, I didn't mm-hmm. care, you know, talking to the reporters or talking to uh, other coaches or anybody. You know, it's like, well, let's talk right now. And after that, I'm going to go have my, uh, my lunch and uh, my little nap and uh, get ready for the game. But uh, in the morning, you don't win any game in the morning. So mm-hmm. talking to reporters, wouldn't my, I, I didn't mind. Okay. How about you, Peter? I, I used to do that all the time, like when I was younger. When I was older, the only reason I said in, 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 um, in L.A. I saw it, that Jonathan Quick doesn't talk to good, you know, I didn't want to break the routine. So I said, you know what, if he doesn't talk, I don't care. I'm not going to talk either. They have, they have the routine, the goalies don't usually talk. Don't want to change it up for anything, you know, just stay away. And literally, I just wanted to, like, after the morning skate, I just want to kind of get out and go, you know, have lunch and kind of relax, get myself ready for the game. So I didn't want to spend more time there even anyway. So that was the whole point why I didn't actually do it in L.A. when I was there. Okay, okay. Now, um, playing goal, what got you started? Uh, Is this a position that you've always wanted to play going back to when you were a kid? Or did it transition? Did you, were you a forward or a defenseman? And then all of a sudden, the team needed a goalie, and 
Stefan, you're playing, or Peter, you're playing. Uh, Stefan, how about you? The position of goal, has it always been your love? Well, when I started playing hockey my first year, there was no goalie, you know. Uh, we were all like players, and sometimes they were putting a player in the net and uh, tried to be a goalie, but without the, uh, the equipment, the goalie equipment. But uh, my second year, uh, the coach came in the dressing room and asked if anybody wants to be a goalie. And nobody wanted to be the goalie. So I said, uh, I raised my hand. I said, well, I'm going to try it. And since that day, I was the goalie. And uh, I stayed there for the rest of uh, my career. So uh, that's, what, uh, that's how it started for me. And uh, I remember I didn't know much about goalie because our first team picture, I had my pads Oh, no, the right you had the, side. You had the inside, first, inside yeah, it? Yeah. That's awesome. You know that big thing on the side there? Uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Pass, They were inside for my first thing picture. So, tell you, I uh, didn't know much about goalies. But after that, I loved uh, to be the goalie. You know, it, it's fun. It's fun, that, you know, uh, teasing the guys because they're not scoring against you. And, uh, you know, uh, making the big save to, uh, to win the game. So, uh, it was just fun. So, so how old were you uh, at this time uh, when the coach asked you, we need a goalie? Were you like six, seven? I was, uh, I was seven, uh, yeah, seven years old. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Peter, how about you? Always been a goalie? Yeah, I, uh, funny, I, I never want to be a player. I never, I never, never kind of had an interest of being a player and scoring goals. So I always, uh, I told my dad, I guess he told me when I was like five years old that, um, you know, I want to try to be a goalie. I was watching a hockey game, uh, and my dad told me that I told him there that I want to be a goalie um, in hockey. My dad never played hockey. You know, he played soccer a little bit. You know, European. You know, he played hockey maybe with like a beer league and stuff like that. So it was like being a goalie. That's like, you know, he was thinking. He was telling me the truth. He's like, I was thinking maybe he's gonna kind of get over it. You know, I'm gonna bring him there a couple times and then he's gonna forget. But I, I went there and I never want to play forward and that's always going to be a goalie and I think I think I only play forward once when there was like a mandatory switch like every goalie had to like I think switch when you're like seven mm -hmm. and you kind of rotate the players and goalies so I played forward one game and then yeah. I went back to that I don't think I did really good so, <laughs> so <laughs> I probably just went oh okay just put him back to that he's okay <laughs> um from Europe from uh I hope I pronounce it right Banska Bristica Close? You good. That was, that was that's very good actually. That's very okay. good. Okay. Actually, I was in Slovakia and the Czech Republic last um, last year. We were on a uh, cruise down the Danube and we Oh, nice. Some of the oh, cities. Danube, you went on that. That's nice. Yeah, very, very nice. Uh, as a kid playing in Slovakia, and I know you eventually went to Canada to play juniors before mm. you turned pro, but who were there goaltenders in Europe that you watched? I know one comes to mind that I'm going to guess, but um, were there European goalies that were kind of your, your idols? Yeah, you know what? Uh, it's funny as you're going to say that. Like, there's, uh, you know, obviously, like, Dominik Hasek was from Czechoslovakia, so, uh, you know, we watched him too. But I, I always kind of inclined more to, like, North American style of play. And, you know, I remember when I was a kid, I was, uh, you know, uh, uh, I was sneaking up because I – television didn't show it the the games were at two o'clock in the morning so mm -hmm. i had to kind of set up the alarm with my brother and <laughs> like that when my parents didn't didn't know they were i'm sure they knew but because we live in a small apartment it wasn't like a big house so i'm sure they knew that we were up but basically just uh get the alarm and watch the nhl playoffs and i you know i really enjoyed watching um the series uh um, Mike Richter was really awesome. I really liked Mike Richter when he was younger, and, and Marty Broder, you know, when he was getting up, and he was still, um, you know, back when they won the first Stanley Cup or when they beat Detroit and all these things. But there's, you know, it's it's tough to put exact finger on a guy that I would follow. I always believe that uh, whoever is in NHL or uh, they have to have something amazing in them. So mm -hmm. me as a young goalie. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that I would copy it 100% because every goalie is different. My name is not Jonathan Quick or Carey Price or whatever, so I can't play like them. But I felt like I can use it in practice and see if it works for me. If it works for me, I would use it 
So I would try to like, you know, copy all these guys and uh, do stuff like that. Watch Power Week. We had like a show called Power Week. That was like a week of NHL in like 30 minutes. Every Thursday, I remember I was always watching it, taping it on a VHS and repeating it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about you, Stefan? Uh, a lot of great goalies over the years from, from Quebec. Um, you were one of them, obviously, but when you were a kid, uh, did you follow anybody in particular? Or like Peter, did you just follow the game and see what was working for everybody? It's kind of f funny for me because when I was young, uh, I wasn't really like watching hockey. You know, me and my, me and my dad we were more fans of uh, wrestling. So we were going at the farm and uh, watching wrestling instead of hockey games. So uh, I used to, you know, play a lot at the rink and play a lot outside too with my friends, stuff like that. But watching the game, I didn't really watch the game, you know. Uh, I wasn't like a Saturday night uh, watching Montreal Canadiens uh, against uh, anybody else, you know. I was just like playing hockey, having fun. And I started to realize that maybe I had a chance to play pro when I was 17 years old, when I played junior, when they start, you know, uh, uh, naming my name for, for the NHL drafts. That's where I started to realize that, oh, maybe I have a chance. But before that, you know, I know Patrick, I know Martin Radar, he's, he's younger than me, but, you know, I know he's a great goalie, Felix Potvin, uh, Roberto Luongo, you know, those French guys, you know, who play in the league. And I had a great success, but um, for me, it was just, it was more for, uh, you know, having fun and playing the game. So I wasn't really watching the game. That's great. Um, over the years, maybe the last 10, 12 years, we've seen a lot of rule changes. Uh, not only the way the game is played to open it up, make it faster, quicker, more exciting, but a lot of rules regarding goaltenders and their equipment and where they can and can't go on the ice. I want to get your take on it. Has it been good for the game? And are there any other changes that you feel the league, the game could make to make it even more exciting? And Peter, I'll, I'll start with you. I mean, you, you played up until two years ago. And of course, the big change for you was when you came in, you could go in the corners and play the puck. Now you can't. What's your take on that, that trapezoid area? Do you like it? Is it good? Does it make any difference? Should the goalies just be allowed to go out and play wherever? Uh, I think it, uh, everything has its pros and cons, I think. And, uh, you know, it's, it's hard for me to say what league should do. In my opinion, uh, it definitely helped the game with being more offensive. Like, you can't really – bring a goalie there and just going to rim it out. You know, he, the puck is stuck there, you know, player has to go get it. They have to battle. There's offensive time, you know, there's more, more time spent in the offensive zone. And I think that's what league is kind of trying to do with all the changes and rule changes and gear changes and everything. They tried to make more goals. Again, they tried to bring more goals, more offense in, in the, in the hockey. You know, I, I believe that, that, that is a really number one thing what the league wants to do you know they want more goals because it's it's i guess boring for people that if the game is 2-1 it's not go it's not boring for the goal it's uh, it's very exciting when the game is 2-1 or 1-0 you know that's the most exciting thing but i think uh the trapezoid is good uh it could potentially be dangerous for the players um, that i can't help my defenseman if he has a player on him and he's gonna get ran and i mean right now they changing that too. You can't even run anybody anymore. <laughs> it's uh, the the hitting part is kind of slowing down. Uh, they try to take away the the injuries and the the, the the dangerous play. So I think the trapezoid is good. Uh, it helps the game, but sometimes I wish I can go help my teammate because I've seen my teammates getting absolutely crushed sometimes, and that that doesn't feel good for me because I can just tell them, hey, heads up, man, it's coming. But there's nothing I can do. Well, before that, I could have just go there and play the puck, and you know, and and help them out a little bit so that that that's my opinion yeah did, Peter did you like playing the puck I mean I, I did I wasn't I wasn't great at it but I did <laughs> like it I have to say that I, I got a little bit better at it uh a little bit better tiny bit uh in Montreal because uh, I spent some time with Carey Price and I, I think he's just an amazing puck handler like mm -hmm. he, uh, you know everybody when you say great puck handlers everybody talks about you know Mike Smith and makes these you know 
uh, you know, breakaway passes and everything else. But in my opinion, as a goalie, and I might be biased because I play with him, but I, I, I know that Stefan would know what I'm talking about. He makes the easy plays the right plays, and he makes the hard play looks easy. And it seems like he's got so much more time than everybody else. And he makes those plays. He doesn't make breakaway passes or gets on one knee and shoot us over a thing or try to, you know. But he makes the plays that really helps the team to get out of his own right away. And that, that in my opinion, he's, he's really good at it. So that helped me watching him to get a little bit better, you know. So, but I wasn't great as at it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Stefan, weigh in on this. Number one, did you like playing the puck? Do you think you were good at it? And uh, what do you think about the changes that, that, that have been made over the years? Well, I, I used I used to play the, pl the the puck a lot because we were allowed. So at my young age, you know, we were like the coach were asking us all the time, go behind the net, stop the puck, move the puck, you know, help your defenseman. So uh, that, that that helped me to get better. And I think I wasn't that bad playing the the puck. I didn't have too many giveaway, I think. But uh, <laughs> you know, you always make some mistakes sometimes. But uh, I don't think I was that bad. And you know, just like Peter said, you know, it's more light for protecting our defensemen, <clears throat> our defensemen, you know, uh, you can't even help them. You know, it's just like Peter said, the only thing you can do is, uh, hey, watch out, you got somebody behind you, you know, or a heads up. You can't even uh, make a, a good play for him to, to protect him. And uh, like Peter said, Carey Price is probably the the best goalie who played the puck right now, you know, those little things doing, you know, every time you play the puck, it's a breakout for the Montreal Canadiens. You know, his, his pass is even harder than uh, some players who make some pass. So he's, uh, he's, re he's a really, really good passer. You know, he held his teammates a lot. And uh, I wish, you know, there was no more lines be behind the net so the, play the goalie can play the puck a little bit more. Good stuff. Now, we're in August as we do this interview, and the Stanley Cup playoffs are underway. Um, is this the first ever, excuse me, is it the first yeah. ever August Stanley Cup final there Stanley you Cup go. playoffs? <clears throat> first ever. August, September, October playoffs. Who would have thunk that? <laughs> um, your thoughts on number one, the way the NHL has structured this, I mean, because the playoffs are, are, are so exciting, and and so far, so good as far as the, uh, the test results for all the players playing in the bubbles. But um, just want you guys to weigh in on your thoughts on how it's set up. And can you give me a couple of teams that you think uh, have a legit shot to, to win? I know pretty much everybody is healthy. Everybody got a chance to get healthy with all the time off from March until, what, late July. Uh, Peter, uh, weigh in on the NHL here in the middle of the summer. Uh, well, I think, you know, I, I was in touch with a few guys that, um, that had to go back and play, and especially from Tampa. You know, I, I was there a few years back, so most of the guys I know. And I bet it's not easy, you know. I think that, you know, when you take a three months off and then you have to jump in um, into the playoff style hockey, you know, it's, it's extremely difficult, you know. I, but I think – uh, on top of everything, the goalie position is uh, you need you, you can have practices and everything else, but you need a game time uh, game timing, I would say. So it's very difficult for a goaltender. You've seen it over the course of the year before and years in the back. At the beginning of this regular season, a lot of goalies struggle for first five, ten games to kind of find the rhythm, find the game, find the little connectivity with their team and the defenseman and everything. So I think it's, it's it's pretty amazing that some guys are really jumping in and they're playing really well. Uh, you know, a lot of goaltenders are playing really well right now. They're, they're keeping the team because um, I, I bet it's not easy for them. You know, it's got to be really hard. But on top of everything, you know, NHL is doing a great job doing the whole bubble thing and everything else. Um, and as you think, the teams, in my opinion, they have a chance, you said, that they kind of like – they can win anything, or is that the question that who I think? Yeah, can win it? I mean, like I said, you know, health-wise, I think all the big guys are back because they got a chance to heal um, with all the time off. So, you know, health really at this point uh, isn't a factor for a lot of these teams. Everybody, knock wood, is is pretty healthy, but 
Yeah, who's going to win the Stanley Cup? That's a tough question. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm happy you got the question first. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I am surprised by the the way the Philadelphia Flyers is playing. Mm -hmm. I think I was very surprised. Uh, I watched their games and uh, they play strong defensive game. Like they they and they're very uh, creative in the offensive zone. Uh, they make plays. Uh, and uh, I was surprised the way they play. I didn't think that Philadelphia was going to play. I mean, I know they have a good team, but uh, I think they they were the surprise team to me. Uh, you know, I think the Colorado looks really good. Tampa obviously looks really good. So it's going to be tough. You know, uh, as Stefan said, you know, all it takes is the good team runs into a hot goalie at that moment. And that goalie can completely steal the series. So it's mm -hmm. – that's the one thing about goalie position that is so amazing that you can single-handedly really uh, demoralize the team. So it's just kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like look at Pittsburgh and Montreal. Like, yeah. Uh, you know – Carey Price was playing well and he got in their heads and then they tried to make too many plays where they didn't have to because they thought they can't beat him anymore. You know, it's, it's a difference between winning and losing. Yeah. Steph, how about you? Well, we never know. I end the playoff with a hot, hot goalie. With a hot goalie, you can win the Stanley Cup. So, uh, it's like Peter said, I like the Flyers. And the only thing about them, they got the young goalie. Yeah. I know he's... he's He's playing well right now, but the more the playoffs going to go, is he going to be as good as right now? So we don't know that. And, uh, you know, I think right now, anybody can win the cup. Anybody. So, you know, there we see some, some surprise like Montreal. Who thought Montreal would have beat the Pittsburgh? Uh, you know, there's some, some good surprise. Who, who would say Edmonton will be out too, you know? It was another surprise there. So, I like Calgary too. I think Calgary is playing some good hockey. They they used to play like the, the tough game, you know? And that's what you need to win in the playoff. With a good goalie and the, the, the tough players, you can go far in the playoff. So, it's, it's hard to say who's going to win the cup. I like the Flyers. Uh, I like Calgary. Uh, but... Who knows, eh? Yeah. Who knows? We're, we're, we're not playing anymore, so eh? we're just uh, enjoying and drinking beer and watching the game now. <laughs> that sounds good. And uh, I think we'll wrap it up on that note so we can go out and grab a beer and watch some playoff hockey. Uh, it's been great chatting with you, Stefan, you, Peter. Um, stay healthy. I hope your families are, are staying healthy, and we look forward to seeing you um, sooner than later. And uh, number one, we're back to hockey, which is great. And uh, we, we look forward to seeing everybody, all the Kings fans uh, listening and watching uh, here today. Uh, look forward to seeing them soon as well. Thanks again, guys. Thanks. No problem. Thanks for having us, guys. Thanks for fun. Yeah. And again, uh, thanks everybody for watching today and join us. I look forward to another Legend Series chat. See you later, everybody.